From ABC, this has been World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Tuesday, it's a very special episode of Moonlighting. People Magazine says it deserves top ten. She was the kind of dame that makes a man grateful he's a man. Baby. Watch Bruce Willis and Golden Globe Award winner Sybil Shepherd in Moonlighting. Tonight. And coming up here next on Eyewitness News at 6, Greg Stone reports on opening arguments in the murder trial of John Reardon. This while Minneapolis police recover thousands of dollars in stolen property. Dave Andrews has details on that. In the wake of the Hormel strike in Austin, City Council falls, calls rather for the resignation of Mayor Tom Q and Catherine Smith reports on Twin Cities churches taking on the federal government. I'm Ruth Spencer along with Stan Turner. We'll have these stories and more next on Eyewitness News at 6. Some people are shocked by what they're capable of. I can't believe it happened. If the guys only knew, boy, would they give it to me. At my age, I didn't think I could do it. Especially when it comes to something they want. I thought I knew what it was all about, but I was afraid to get involved. Then it got to be a habit. Something I wanted every day. Imagine me, a grandmother, getting mixed up in a thing like this. But when they start to admit it to themselves... I guess everybody's got an obsession. I've got to confess. I guess I have to face up to it. They love what they see. I'm hooked on General Hospital. On loving. On all my children. On Ryan's hope. On one life to live. Get hooked on ABC Daytime. You'll love it. From your favorite ABC soaps to our own good company at 8 is Enough, get hooked on the entire daytime lineup. You'll love it right here on Channel 5. Now, the news continues with the team that covers the Twin Cities and all of Minnesota. This is Eyewitness News at 6. Seven weeks after 13-year-old Sarah Raritan disappeared, her family's worst fears were realized when her body was discovered in a field. Her father is charged with sexually abusing and murdering his daughter. Good evening, everyone. I'm Stan Turner, along with Ruth Spencer. And today in Washington County, District Court opening arguments in the trial of John Raritan. Greg Stone has the story. This morning, Ottertail County attorney Michael Kirk began the state's case with a matter-of-fact version of some allegedly brutal events. He calls this a case of sexual exploitation that led to violent murder. Authorities say Rairdon told them he had sexually abused his daughter as many as 60 times during the five years prior to her death, beginning when she was eight. And they say he told them he killed her when she resisted. Kirk said today Rairdon's determination for sex met with her determination to reclaim her innocence. Rairdon pleaded guilty to sexual abuse, but not guilty to murder. His attorney, Dan Eller, a public defender, says Rairdon now does not remember if he killed his daughter. Eller plans to challenge the credibility of Rairdon's confessions, and he hinted that his client may have been worn down by the questioning. This case has been played out on the front pages since Rairdon spearheaded a campaign to locate his daughter, even taking to the airwaves to plead with her abductor to spare her. Reporters have been following this case closely from the start, and now one of them will take a direct role. Reardon reportedly told a TV reporter at a news conference back in August that she would be surprised when she found out who the killer was. And she'll have a chance to tell her tale in court because the prosecution has called her as a state's witness. I'm Greg Stone for Channel 5 Eyewitness News at the Washington County Courthouse in Stillwater. Tonight, Minneapolis police say that they may have solved a string of recent burglaries. Yes, six people were arrested last night, and as Dave Andrews reports here, the arrests also led to the recovery of thousands of dollars worth of stolen property. Working on a search warrant, police entered this home at 4248 Columbus Avenue South last night. Inside, they confiscated property believed stolen in a rash of South Minneapolis burglaries since last November. Six suspects, two adults and four juveniles, were arrested. Charges are pending. Police were very much aware of the rash of burglaries in this section of South Minneapolis. They even dubbed them the Columbus Avenue Capers because the burglaries all centered around that avenue. Most of the burglaries occurred in an area between 38th Street South to 54th and from Bloomington Avenue West to I-35. Houses were broken into in uh, real crude fashions, breaking windows, uh, 
some unlocked doors, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, the losses range from uh, television sets, microwaves, to children's clothing and toys. Uh, because of that, it was real hard to try and establish a pattern of who may be doing these. But last night, police were led by a set of wheelbarrow tracks through the snow from a burglarized home to the suspect's house. Police say they will set up a special phone number for families who think their property may be among that recovered. In South Minneapolis, Dave Andrews, Channel 5, Eyewitness News. An attorney for John David Lander says that his client may plead innocent by reason of insanity. Lander is accused of kidnapping his former in-laws from their Plainview, Minnesota home. Lander has been found competent to stand trial, and he has entered innocent pleas to the kidnapping charges. His lawyer, Scott Tilson, says that Lander will now be examined by defense and prosecution psychiatrists. Local churches providing sanctuary for refugees are taking on the federal government. Catherine Smith has that story when we continue. And next, uh, Kevin Berger reports from Austin, Minnesota, where the Hormel strike today made its way to City Hall. Stay tuned. something very special at Perkins. Morning. Yes, it's Perkins Magnificent 7, featuring three pancakes, two eggs, and two pieces of bacon or sausage, all seven for this very special price. And the best part is, we serve it anytime. <laughs> Singing and dancing in the rain, no problem, but driving in the rain, now that's why I want to partner with Front Wheel Drive for extra traction, sure-footedness. Your Toyota dealer's got more Front Wheel Drive models than any other import. And prices so low, they'll have you singing. Don't slip up. See your Toyota dealer's Front Wheel Drive lift back sedans, wagons. Now, who could ask for anything more? There's a disease afflicting 12 million people in this country that few of us even recognize. There may be sleeplessness or loss of appetite, anxiety or confusion, and sometimes feelings of such total hopelessness that the will to live finally dies. The illness is severe depression, and help is available. For answers and treatment, call the Adult Mental Health Program. Nobody cares the way we do. The National Guard today cleared the way for workers to enter the Hormel plant in Austin. 100 guardsmen were on, on the scene and there were no reports of any violence and only the legal number of pickets were at the gates of the plant this morning. The plant manager, Daryl Arnold, says that he hopes to have more than 1,000 employees on the payroll by the end of this week. Ruth? And also in Austin today, the Hormel strike took a new twist. The Austin City Council says that they've lost confidence in their mayor, who is himself a striking Hormel worker. Kevin Berger has the story. The handling of the National Guard has been botched, botched by Austin's mayor. Furthermore, Tom Q has distorted information about the Guard's presence and activities and jeopardized public safety in the process. Those are but a few of the charges leveled in this strongly worded statement of disagreement today released by Austin City Council. The statement suggests Q, a P9 member, has been more a union man than a mayor when the city needs impartiality. And I think if people criticize me for sticking up for my fellow workers and sticking up for the people that have made this town what it is today, then I'll just have to take my chances at the next election. I think he, f he finds his support from union members and he, I think, relies on that support to make his decisions with. And I think that has gotten him in trouble. I believe I've made the right decisions. Uh, I back up those decisions thoroughly. Does the council have any confidence in the mayor's judgment? At this point, no. The statement of disagreement does not call for Mayor Q's resignation. However, privately, the councilman who drafted it says he hopes the mayor would take the hint. Mayor Q told me under no circumstances will he leave his office. Kevin Berger, Channel 5 Eyewitness News, Austin. 
Two leaders of local P9 in Austin were sentenced today on contempt of court charges. P9 President Jim Guyette and union strategist Ray Rogers were found guilty of contempt yesterday for violating a judge's order on limiting picketing at Hormel. Today, each man was fined $250. They were sentenced to 15 days in jail, but the judge then stayed those sentences. Stan? All right, Ruth, at the legislature today, if the State House Commerce Committee gets its way, smokeless tobacco products sold and advertised here in Minnesota will have to carry health warning labels. Many witnesses, including State Attorney General Skip Humphrey, testified in favor of the bill. By the way, no one spoke out against it. Witnesses say that young people who are the primary target for smokeless tobacco advertising are attracted by the product's macho image. The purchase and use of these materials by our children will kill them. Just as surely as if a gun were put to their heads and the trigger pulled, and often with results equally as devastating. Sponsors say that the goal of the bill is to warn people that use of snuff and chewing tobacco increases the risk of health problems. And the House Budget Committee today approved a resolution to cut the state budget by $384 million in order to help offset a projected revenue shortage. The resolution was approved on a voice vote with DFL members opposing it. Now, the resolution calls for taking $350 million from the state's reserve fund, lowering the budget by $384 million, and leaving $100 million in the reserve fund. Those figures are said to be consistent consistent with Governor Perpich's proposals. This resolution, by the way, will probably reach the House floor next Monday. Ruth? And a state task force is recommending some harsher penalties for drunk driving. The DWI task force is asking that the license plates of repeat DWI offenders be impounded. Task force members say that simply revoking the driver's license of such an offender may not stop him or her from driving. The impoundment law would allow for the issuance of special plates so that other members of the violator's family could continue to drive. Thousands of churches all over our country are filing formal requests with the federal government because they want to know about undercover investigations within their congregations. As Catherine Smith reports tonight, local churches involved in the sanctuary movement claim that the government has overstepped its rights by sending agents into the churches. There are four churches in the Twin Cities that have declared their congregations places of sanctuary for Central American refugees, like Alberto and Teresa, who lived at Walker United Methodist Church in Minneapolis. Now pastors at two of the churches say they want some answers from the federal government. They want to know the extent of undercover investigations in their churches. We have nothing to hide, but people have a right to know uh, in, in the context of worship and prayer whether or not the Someone, someone from the government is recording their prayers. More than three years ago, Reverend Lundy and his congregation opened their doors to Rene Hurtado. Lundy says he knows that agents with the Immigration and Naturalization Service were in his church at least once without permission. Other pastors in the sanctuary movement say the government's methods of investigation have been outrageous. This form of surreptitious surveillance uh, constitutes uh, harassment and intimidation that has an effect not only on the refugees but upon the First Amendment freedoms of religion and separation of church and state in this country. Rene Hurtado was arrested one year ago today. He's still in the Twin Cities waiting for a new deportation hearing. Reverend Lundy says for the handful of refugees in Minnesota, this new twist may be a dangerous one. I think refugees in the sanctuary movement across the movement are frightened. We told them that we could help them. It's not now as clear that we can protect them. Catherine Smith, Channel 5 Eyewitness News, Minneapolis. Okay, well, the threat was certainly there, but the freezing drizzle didn't quite reach us here in the Twin Cities. We say bravo to that, right, Ruth? Dennis has the weather details next. And then coming up, Bob Vernon joins us with a five-team spirit winner, so stay tuned. Underneath it all, matters is the burger and if you want a burger that's thicker and juicier than mcdonald's quarter pounder wendy single and the new burger king whopper you want the new quarter pound burger at hardy's try the thickest juiciest burger of them all brand new at hardy's Weekday mornings, come alive, Twin City. And anything that tears the family apart is wrong. Does she really know what a family is? There's more sex and violence on primetime TV That's than there is on any one of our records. Here on Twin Cities Live, right ahead. When she lost interest, 
Then I started losing interest and looking for something somewhere else. The greatest gift he ever gave his wife was leaving her. What are the parents doing with the kids in anyway? Oh, is that a loaded question? See you tomorrow morning. Bye. Come alive, Twin Cities, weekdays at 9 on Channel 5. Hey, I'm Bob Vernon's here now with another five Team Spirit Award winner. That's right, Ruth. Today's winner is a real can do kind of person. We met her at the Ramsey County Chapter of the American Lung Association. Now, Peggy Koffenberg is 78 years old, a real dynamo, and she's contributed nearly 15,000 hours to the association. And as director Barb Hughes explains, Oh, she's just a super volunteer, and that's indeed what we call her. She keeps this place going a lot. It's because of her that uh, we've managed to have get, run the whole office with only one secretary and Peggy, but we couldn't do without her. Yeah. And in her spare time, Peggy bowls in two different leagues. Quite a lady, any way you look at her. She's a team player with loads of team spirit. Now, if you know someone who should be given our Team Spirit Award, you can write and tell us about him or her. Our address is Team Spirit Awards, KSTP-TV, 3415 University Avenue, St. Paul, 55114. Neat, huh? Yeah. How, how do people have so much time to do all of those things? I don't know. I, when I go, go out to give these awards out, I just meet incredible people. Yeah. I, we get so many letters from people, and I'd like to give them all awards, and most of them are deserving, but we'll get there sooner or later. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Well, it was last week that we introduced you to our Winter Carnival Trivia Contest, and last night on the update, we announced our very first winner, Russ Bonds of Grantsburg, Wisconsin. Tonight at 10, we'll choose the second winner, so be certain to tune in. Winners are eligible for up to $2,000 in cash prizes. Well, we're eligible for a little relief from this gray stuff. Aren't Please, we? No, Dennis. We're not going to get it for a while, are we? Huh? Give you a little hint. According to the computers, big changes are on their way for next week. Some days I hate those computers. Big but, changes. Huh? Big changes. We'll talk about okay. that at 10. In case you're counting, today is day number six of no sun, lots of clouds. I've been counting. Yeah, and it appears day number seven and eight may be uh, in the bag. <laughs> it was a foggy start this morning, wasn't it? Just as advertised as the rush hour began to work in school, visibilities were only a half mile at best, lower in some of the valleys, and there were the usual scattered slippery spots from some patchy freezing drizzle from time to time. The good news is that our winds are picking up a little bit tonight, so the fog shouldn't be quite as thick tonight as it was last night, but it's still going to be around. Well, KSTP's color radar showed freezing rain. It was down there, and it stayed down there. As the laps rose along since about 8.30 this morning, it just hung in in extreme southeastern Minnesota and much of northern Iowa. Pretty good coating of ice down there. But as the laps uh, comes up in a live picture, well, we just have scattered showers down in southeastern Minnesota and northeastern Iowa. And that's it. Just a uh, blank around the center of the skull, maybe a scattered flurry from time to time, but certainly nothing of any significance. Came close, but we got real lucky this time. Outside at the airport, temperature as of 6 o'clock is 31 degrees. Dew point still close to that, so there's a lot of moisture hanging in the area. Humidity is 88%. The wind right now is out of the northeast at 18. Pressure is rising with a wind chill of 6 and skies are overcast. In the Almanac, the high today was 32, the low was 30. Not much range in the temperatures because of the cloud cover that we had, but both of those well above the pace for this time of the year. Snowfall department, just a trace since midnight. Sunset, as the daylight hours stretch out a little more, will be a 527 tomorrow night. Low temperatures last night are kind of interesting. It's almost like an early springtime situation. The northwestern half of the country is kind of cool, and we still have minus teens, minus 20 below readings on the map there in northeastern Canada. But look at the warmth that continues to pump up into the southern part of the country with lows in the 60s and the 50s. That's fueling the fire, so to speak for a storm system. In fact, there's a series of areas of low pressure moving along this weak front to our south and southeast. Behind it, it's raining, and of course, we still have the fog, although you can see it's not as extensive as it was last night at this time. As I said, this is a springtime situation with springtime thunderstorms. Look at the satellite loop for tonight. And a couple of things going on here. One, you'll notice the clouds, which are just shearing off across southern Minnesota. One's going this way, the other one's going that way. And Neither the two shall meet, so the clouds are just going to hang in here for the next couple of days, it looks like. But down here, some dangerous thunderstorms, severe thunderstorm warnings, a couple of tornadoes dropping down in parts of Alabama, and it's going to be pretty wet in the south over the next couple of days. In fact, over the next 48 hours, it looks like a quarter of an inch of rain will be coming all through the east. But look at this, one inch, two inch, even three inches. Yep, springtime is coming on to the south and southeast, but up in the Northland, it's still going to be kind of cool. No spring. It'll definitely look and feel a little bit like winter. Now, the weather map for tomorrow shows the area of low pressure still on the map, but just barely. It's moving on to our south and southeast. 
pulling the rain, what it has with it, away from it. And behind the cold air, well, there'll be a few lingering flurries. We're trying to get an area of high pressure building in behind it, but it's not a very strong one at all. It's not getting much help in those all important upper levels of the atmosphere. So some dry air will come in, but just minuscule amounts, enough where we can't really put the sun in for tomorrow. Temperatures uh, for tonight are going to hold pretty steady. The KSTP forecast for tonight calls for foggy skies, some flurries of freezing drizzle are possible, lows of 24 to 29. And for tomorrow and tomorrow night, more clouds, fog and flurries, highs of 26 to 31, lows tomorrow night a little cooler at 17 to 22. Thursday, yeah, you guessed it, more clouds with some flurries or light snow possible, highs of 23 to 27. But hang on. Maybe, maybe partly cloudy weather Friday, but it won't last long with the increase in clouds Saturday and chance of snow Sunday. Ladies Big and gentlemen, next, next week. Yeah. Uh, Welcome uh, to Seattle. Yes. Uh, is that about it? <laughs> That's huh? about Good. it. Good grief. If we wanted this, we'd go there. All right. Well, today's dreary weather kept North Star's <laughs> defenseman Kurt Giles off the ice and in the classroom with a bit of sunshine of his own. Dozens of first graders from Lincoln Elementary School in Minneapolis admitted they were curious about the hockey player. Well, Giles, evident, Giles evidently was just as interested in the youngsters because he showed up at their school to read them a book, oh, Curious happened? George, no less. February, incidentally, is I Love to Read Month, and Giles proved he loves to read almost as much as he loves to play hockey, right? Still ahead here. The Vikings' ownership fight continues in Hennepin County District Court. We'll have a live report on that. And speaking of hockey, it is all-star night in the National yeah. Hockey League. Bob Bruce has these stories and more next on Eyewitness Sports. Take a delightful winter break. See the exciting Home and Garden Show, Minneapolis Auditorium, Friday, January 31st through Tuesday, February 4th. All of us here at Towsley Ford celebrate the opening of our new Subaru dealership just three blocks away at Highway 694 and 61. Now, we've put sale prices on every car and truck through the end of the month. Over 300 go-in-the-snow four-wheel drives, hundreds of front-wheel drives, Subarus and Fords in all over a 1,000 cars and trucks to choose from. Many with 7.9 APR financing. Come celebrate with us and get a sale price on the car or truck you want at Towsley Ford and Towsley Subaru, White Bear Lake. Don't let quack grass run wild. Stop it along with 33 weeds and grasses before they start with Eradicane Extra. Tonight at 7 o'clock, Channel 5 will be carrying the President's State of the Union address. And tonight you can find out what our own Minnesota lawmakers think about what the President has to say. Our government specialist, Lindsey Strand, is in Washington right now. She's going to be tracking down our local congressman in Washington for that special event. And she joins us live via the New Star Network at this hour. Lindsey? Well, Ruth, we're going to be talking to several members of the delegation tonight to get their reaction. A lot of questions, even they don't know the details of what the president will be talking about tonight. For example, will he be talking about catastrophic health insurance? A lot of people think so. No one knows for sure. The president is not here yet, but the security is very tight here on the Hill. In fact, in addition to our credentials when we came in, we also had to be sniffed by the dogs. A very tight security. Everybody is waiting. The president will be here in about 35 minutes. Reporting live via the News Star Network from Washington. Washington, I'm Lindsay Strand. All right, thank you, Lindsay. And of course, we will see her again during that State of the Union wraparound that we're going to do here from the studio. Hi, Bob Bruce. I guess you've got more on the court fight. Let's huh? go to court today. It's day two of the Vikings ownership fight at Hennepin County Government Center. Team President Max Winter was expected to take the stand today. So far, he has not. But the judges listened to testimony from co owners John Scoglin and Jack Steele. For the latest, let's go live to Channel 5's Rob Lear. Rob? Bob, you know, this case has been described as the ultimate power struggle, and based on some of the testimony today, it's easy to understand why. Now, the respondents in this case, Viking stockholders Jack Steele, you might remember he's one of the trustees of the Bill Boyer estate, and John Skoglin, the club's uh, chairman of the board, were scheduled to take the stand, but time would only allow Steele to be heard. Now, Steele's testimony focused on general manager Mike Lynn's master plan to purchase stock and secure a new contract. More on the contract in a bit, uh, just a bit. But first of all, to talk about the testimony, Steele said that he was led to believe in April of 1984 that the reason that Lynn wanted to secure some stock was, was because it was in the best interest of the Vikings and Max Winter. Was there a first right of refusal clause in that contract? I talked to Steele outside the courtroom earlier today. As far as we're concerned, uh, we get two of them signed, and uh, I'm sure their side believes they're right. We believe we're right, but it's in the hands of the lawyers and the judges. How damaging do you believe at all the uh, Mike Lynn's move, the master plan so-called, to, uh, to make some moves to gain some ownership? Well, I think at that time when Mike made the move for his contract that uh, he wasn't even talking ownership then, so it had nothing to do with it. 
Now, while on the stand today, Steele did disclose the specifics of Mike Lynn's $1 million contract. Let's spell it out for you exactly where it all stacks up. You see a base salary, $550,000. Director fees and bonuses, $100,000 to $150,000. 10% of all executive box seats at the Metrodome Rentals and deferred compensation. All Viking board members signed the agreement, but some reluctantly. Steele said the day during his testimony that Max Winner signed, and at the time he stated he thought he was being blackmailed and said Mike Lynn will soon be done. Well, what did Max Winter uh, sign this whole reluctantly for, Bob? We'll have to wait until Max Winter takes the stand. Okay, thanks, Rob. A pretty good salary for a guy whose team has been 500 or less over the last six or seven years. The cream of the National Hockey League's crop is in Hartford tonight for the NHL All-Star Game. Of course, you know who is the star of stars. Wayne Gretzky is one of nine players from Edmonton who will suit up for the Campbell Conference tonight. Five Oilers are in the starting lineup, but eventually some other players will get a chance to skate, including our own Neil Broughton, who is the lone North Star on this year's All-Star team. Neil last played in the All-Star Game back in 1983. Minnesota will also be represented on the Prince of Wales squad tonight. Minneapolis native Mike Ramsey has again made the all-star team. Mike, of course, is a defenseman with the Buffalo Sabres. Game time tonight is 7.05, and we'll have the highlights for you tonight on the Eyewitness News update. College basketball tonight. There is a showdown at the Omni in Atlanta, where top-ranked North Carolina was square off against second-ranked Georgia Tech. Those are also the top two teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference, but according to the pollsters, Duke isn't far behind. No way three ACC teams should be that far up in the poll. I don't agree with this at all. Memphis State dropped from second. They dropped down a little bit to fourth. Then it's Kansas, Oklahoma, Syracuse, Michigan, Nevada, Las Vegas, and St. John's. Obviously, all the East Coast writers voting for the ACC. A couple other notes. Bears quarterback Jim McMahon may have been the toast of Super Bowl week in New Orleans, but McMahon is not a big hit with everybody. Take the Redskins' Joe Theismann, for example. According to Theismann, McMahon should have more respect for his profession. And if it wasn't for football, the Bears quarterback would be some yo-yo out there drinking beer. Theismann didn't stop there. He added that he wouldn't want his kids to grow up like McMahon. He definitely doesn't like the shades and the haircut. And not only that, as far as Theismann is concerned, McMahon has a lot to prove as a quarterback. Said Joe, the defense won the Super Bowl, and even if Walter Payton had been playing quarterback, the story would have been the same. Well, he may have a point. And Ruth uh, signing today by the Twins pitcher Mike Smithson. He has agreed to terms, and he was going to go to arbitration tomorrow, so it's good that they got that contract signed. Boy, He'll it's nice there. to think of the Twins in baseball in summer. That's right. Wait. It's only a mere yeah. four weeks. I'll be in Florida for spring training. Mm. Thank you, Bob. Coming up tonight at 10 o'clock on the Eyewitness News Update, a look at how to recognize if you are addicted to another person. Some call it love addiction. That's when we stay in an unhealthy relationship with people we know are not meeting our needs. Are you in this situation? Join us tonight as our series on love addiction looks at affairs, single women, and married men. Also coming up tonight at 10 o'clock, Dr. Michael Breen reports on a proposed state bill that could reduce your risk of getting cancer. That bill would give Minnesota the most advanced system anywhere for detecting early cell clusters of that disease. Well, Ruth, they have left behind the beach and the boat their former homes, and they are turning up everywhere now on the streets and the bars, no matter what the weather. They are sunglasses, the fashion accessory of the moment, say those who know. They are hot, they're cool, but why? Well, they are the newest way to finish a look or disguise one. Cleopatra peered through rubies to protect her eyes. Greta Garbo, yeah, James Dean, Jackie Onassis, and Don Johnson all have the shades look these days. And the craze is on as sunglass sales across the country exceed $1 billion annually. And if you dare ask anyone wearing sunglasses on a cloudy day, like today in the past five days, why they are wearing them, they'll probably tell you a face is like a work of art. It deserves a great frame. I think we've been framed by the weather the last uh, two days. My boy. Two more days. Of course, you two don't need days. sunglasses at night unless it is a fashion look. I don't know, but it's dark outside. It's going to stay dark for it. No, that's a comedy routine. It, <laughs> it is going to be a foggy night. Foggy skies, flurry, freezing drizzle is out there. Lows tonight dropping into the upper 20s if you're going outside. Winds northeast, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Okay, that's it, huh? And once again, we're going to have a reminder here that we will have President Reagan's State of the Union address tonight. That's at 7 o'clock, and that's live via the New Star Network. Okay, but back to the weather. We've had several days of foggy weather, six, Dennis, six. Mm -hmm. And we leave you tonight with a look at the fog. Photographer Dwayne Margison provides us with these pictures.
Just like the Twin Cities are a shining star in the Midwest, you can watch the stars shine here on Entertainment Tonight. For an insider's look at show business, join us weeknights at 6.30 on Channel 5. Shouldn't we at least ask him why he did it? I don't give a damn why he did it. I don't care what anybody says, Rossi. I like the story you wrote on Garber. Thank you. It was just totally inaccurate, that's all. We provoke trouble in a town where they're trying very hard to maintain peace. We hurt them, Charlie. They got him boxed in. 307, I think. Do you hear that? Why? Sounds like they found that doper who killed the cop. You gonna give us a hard time? If you have a problem with management, why don't you file a grievance? Lou Grant, weeknights at 11 on Channel 5. A young girl kidnapped in a strange land. Seduced by a world of pleasure.